in which we stand the name jesus christ the name that gives us a fresh start the name that gives us a fresh beginning the name that gives us a reason to live in this name we have been called the one that rests at the bottom of our soul the one that rests at the bottom of our heart when we turn back to him when people turn to you oh god they are changed when people turn to you oh god they receive a new direction and a new dimension here we are in your presence oh god we submit our hearts to you we submit our ways to you and we say have your own way we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor we adore you because you love us in jesus name we pray amen beloved you're welcome to end time radio my name is brother gabriel and life in christ ministry god's word for our.com if you have tuned in this afternoon i have a very powerful word of god that the lord has been dealing with me the gospel of forgiveness the gospel of forgiveness beloved when we talk about grace we are talking about forgiveness when we're talking about mercy we're talking about forgiveness when we're talking about salvation we're talking about forgiveness forgiveness is the cord of the teachings of jesus christ without forgiveness jesus didn't come to this world he came to forgive us our sin forgiveness was the reason why jesus came not our salvation so when we focus on salvation and we don't focus on our forgiveness we will be missing the mark i would like you to understand that many of us when we're talking about salvation 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 we really don't understand what salvation actually means salvation means receiving forgiveness of god and because of that you live the rest of your life for the one who has forgiven you it is very profound that there are many christians who are living today they don't seek the forgiveness of god they are not interested about forgiveness of god the gospel of forgiveness is the gospel that you and me need to hear about the lord has been given us a whole lot that we need to think about every day ladies and gentlemen i personally believe there have never been such a time like this that the lord has been revealing himself to the children who love him so much to come and have forgiveness come and have forgiveness let me begin the teachings today by reading what a friend a christian brother that the lord has been taking to heaven that the lord has been spoken to every now and then what he shared a vision of divine document last night in the vision the christian worldwide were waiting for aeroplane to take us to a particular country which the builder and the founder was god hebrews chapter 11 verse 10 we all waited for the aeroplane but suddenly the aeroplane arrived we were all joyful and glad to see the aeroplane arriving on the aeroplane was written rapture then we all hold the document in our hand and this will give us evidence that we want to go with the flights immediately that aeroplane arrived everybody was checking his document if anything is missing or not meanwhile i was wondering how the plane will contain all of us by the pilot was the holy spirit of god that would take people to meet the lamb of god 
Then as we go before the entrance of the plane, there was a man standing, his face full of smile and glorious. He will say, hello, show me your document. In the document was not complete. If the document was not complete, he will say, your document is not complete. You are not worthy. But if the document is complete, he will say, you have a complete document. Go and occupy your seat for the great wedding of the Lamb. Many fake documents were rejected. And many incomplete documents were rejected. I could see many that I knew here on Facebook running to and fro looking their remaining documents and some original document before the flight will leave. I could see sadness of their faces because where to get documents has been closed. But still yet they continue running. But when those who have the complete document had entered the man that stood at the entrance waved his hand to those who doesn't have the complete document. He sorrowed for them and the door was closed. Then the airplane left. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, those who remain was asking their self question why they were rejected and the fallen was their same because of our restitution. A large percentage of people service because of restitution. What is restitution? Restitution is forgiveness. It's forgiveness. Forgiving others, receiving others, forgiveness. Forgiving others and receiving forgiveness from others. This is the gospel of repentance. The gospel of forgiveness. My mentor helped me to do this fake document. 95% said that. 95%. Their mentor, their pastor, their GO, their prophet gave them a wrong information that will not help them to be part of the flights that were taking people to eternity. My pastor said my document was okay. But that he was deceiving me. 99%. 99% of them were deceived by the endorsement of their pastors, their GOs. Mm. I saw the document was okay. 100% said this. They thought that they were living right. They thought everything was perfect. Without getting forgiveness of Jesus Christ. 100% of them said that. I copy my friend to do my documents. 90% of the people said this. They copy what the friends were holding. A pastor said they won't ask me of some in need. But now that is what I was asked for. 80% people said this. That the pastor told them they weren't. It wasn't necessary. Those documents are not needed. Hmm. That is what was 80% view. Never did let the foundation of God stand forever. Sure. Having this seal, those who are of the Lord, they separate themselves. God knows those who are His. God knows. And therefore, let everyone that name the name of God absent himself from iniquity. I then wake up. This vision is taking about rapture. It's talking about rapture. Heaven still require complete holiness from you. Do the necessary thing you need to do. Rapture is knocking at your door of the earth. Very soon the sky will welcome the arrival of Jesus Christ and the end time has end already. Prepare to meet the Lamb of God. Share this with worldly friend, family, churches, friends, wife, husband. There is no more time to be wasted. Beloved, there is no more time to be wasted. I preach the love of God because God loves us. 
God loves us and he wants you and me to love one another. I preach peace because you must follow peace with all men. Without it, nobody can see God. I preach grace because the grace of God is sufficient for all human soul. I preach holiness and I stand for holiness, righteousness and truth. Because without this, no man shall be accepted and shall see God. I preach purification of the heart. Because blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. I preach about the kingdom of God because it has been prepared for all men who accept the forgiveness of God. I preach about God's judgment because he is a consuming fire and consume anything that stands in his judgment. I preach about rapture because this is a sudden glorious event which you and me must not miss. It is an event when Jesus is going to take those who are his, hide them from the wrath of God which is about to happen and hit the earth. I preach about hellfire because it is a terrible place. It is a place of agony, it is a place of torment. It's a place of eternal wrath of God that no human being will even love his greatest enemy to enjoy that place. I talk about that place and I want people not to go there because there is no exit. I want people not to go there because there is no water, there is no pee, there is no salvation. I want people because there, it is eternity, there is no end to that place. That is why I want people not to go to hell. It is not a place that God created for human beings. It is a place where people who have not received the forgiveness of God goes. People who have not received forgiveness of men. People who have not accepted forgiveness. That is where they go. I preach about repentance because Jesus is so having a pleasure in your soul. And he wants you to turn away from your weaknesses to enjoy his love. He loves you so much that he wouldn't allow you to suffer in hell. He loves you. I preach against worldly dressing because you need not to present your body and your soul to sin, rather to holiness and sacrifice your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable only unto God. Your body belongs to God and therefore you must keep it pure until the end what a glorious day we will see each other in the marriage supper of the lamb as you desire to make heaven i want to warn you this afternoon and i want you to be aware that there are days coming there are hard times ahead of us and christians must be ready to go through a lot there are many of us we don't know the time and the season where we are. There are many of us who are walking in all kinds of diabolical things, thinking that it is all right. You are listening to all kinds of all grace teachings. You are listening to all kinds of preaching that does not promote heaven. This afternoon, my subject is the gospel of forgiveness the gospel of forgiveness forgiveness means receiving the love of a person without any hidden agenda forgiveness means pressing the button of somebody's sin and setting the person free Forgiveness comes only when a person accepts that he has offended somebody. Forgiveness can only be given to a person who asks for it. Until and unless a person asks for forgiveness, there is no forgiveness of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Our ways, our plans, and our plots, and our wicked ways have consequences. It has consequences. So every step of mankind must know that there are consequences of that. Sin means separating ourselves from God. Anything that causes us to be separated from God is sin. Disobedience to the will of God. Disobedience to the purpose of God for your life. Beloved, I would like you to understand and appreciate the need. I want you to understand and appreciate the need of the gift of the forgiveness of God. Jesus said, and this gospel of forgiveness must be preached. And this gospel, turn your Bible with me to the book of Luke. The gospel of forgiveness must be preached. Matthew chapter, sorry, St. Luke gospel chapter number 18. The Gospel of Forgiveness. Luke Gospel. Saint Luke Gospel. The chapter number 18. The Lord loves us. And he doesn't want any of us to be destroyed. Luke Gospel. We want to read the chapter number 18. We begin the teachings of forgiveness, the gospel of forgiveness. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the one that died for us Luke gospel verse chapter number 18 Verse 30 say, Go ye into the villages over against you in the which at your entering ye shall find cold thigh. Yet never ever every man lose him and bring him hither. Lose him and bring him either. This is when Jesus Christ was about to enter into his glory. He sent the disciples to go and bring him a cult that has been tied. A cult being tied is a symbol of a man being held captive in his sin. And he said, go and loose him and bring him to me. Go and loose him and bring him to me. Ladies and gentlemen, forgiveness is loosing a man from his bondage. Forgiveness is loosing a man from his bondage. Jesus Christ came to give us the knowledge of salvation. The knowledge of salvation simply means the forgiveness of sin. In Luke chapter 1 verse 77, the Bible says that this same Jesus, 
He will give his people the knowledge of salvation. Luke chapter 24, the verse number 47. Jesus said this. And that repentance for forgiveness of sin will be preached. Repentance for forgiveness of sin will be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. Repentance that leads into forgiveness of sin. How can we be saved if repentance is not being preached to us? How can we be saved if we have not received forgiveness? Acts chapter number 2 verse 38 Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. For the forgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, the gospel of forgiveness of sin. Is the highest gospel that you need to listen to. Have you been forgiven? You can be baptized. But without forgiveness, your baptism is futsal. You can be a church member. But without forgiveness of sin, you are beaten about the bush. There are many of us who are not listening to this gospel today. And we think that we are going to heaven by the way. And that is the deception that the enemy has allowed to grow in the church of Christ today. Sin is the most dangerous thing that every human being can play with. Why? Because sin separates us from God. We need forgiveness. Forgiveness press the baptism and delayed the separation between man and God. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Live in the land. In the place that God had ordained them to live. Yet, they rebel against the commandment of God and they brought curse upon themselves. But to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. For in the day that you eat it, you shall die. What is death? Death means separated from God. Death means being separated from God. Now you can no longer be in the presence of God. There is no way that you can see God. That is what sin means. The day that you will sin, you will be separated from me. The day that you will eat the forbidden fruit. Adam and Eve did not obey God. Chapter 3 of Genesis verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve and his wife hid themselves the presence of the Lord. God among the tree of the garden. Adam and Eve separated themselves. Why? Because they have sinned against God. Sin separates us from God. That is why we need forgiveness. Jesus is the only one that can give us that forgiveness. You must be forgiven. You must seek forgiveness more than any sin. If there is anything that you and me need to pursue, I believe it is forgiveness. And this gospel of forgiveness will be preached. And the gospel of forgiveness will be preached to the whole world. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah, 
Isaiah the chapter number 59 the Bible says that God is not slow to hear God is not slow but because of our sin it has separated us from him my sin and your sin separate us from God that is why you and me we need the forgiveness of God we need the forgiveness of God that will press the button and delay it behold the Lord hand is not shortened at all that it cannot save nor hear or dull with defense that it cannot hear but your iniquity have made separation between you and your God and your sin have hidden his face sin hides the face of God from us God cannot look at us because of sin God can no longer look at you because of sin beloved sin is not something to be joked with Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 People sin separate them from Christ. And without God, there is no life. Our sin separates us from God. But forgiveness restores our relationship. Forgiveness restores our relationship. You and me need to be forgiven. You and me need to be forgiven. Because we have sinned against God. Sin causes us to become enemies to God and our lovers. Husband and wife may be alienated by the mistreatment of idolatry, alcoholism. There may be bitterness quarreling. That can lead to divorce. Sin. Separate us from our hearts. Man is separated not from physically. But we separated in our hearts. Separation is not physical. It is spiritual. When a man and a wife is separated. They might be living. Sleeping on the same bed. But they are separated. Parents and children can have conflicts why the love of god and the love of mother and father can never be there because of abuse stubbornness selfishness and other kind in the luke gospel chapter 15 the verse number 13 the bible talks about a gentleman who separated himself from his dad and he didn't know that he has been separated. He lived in his father's house without knowing the father. He never accepted the father's love. He got material things from the father, yet he never had the love of the father. He was separated. Sometimes we can receive things from our spouse, receive gifts. We can even have sex with them, yet we are separated. Because separation is not physical. Separation is a mind sin. Sin causes us to be alienated enemies to one and another. That is why we need forgiveness. You need to ask forgiveness. You need to ask forgiveness. Alienation also can occur in the church in between friends there may be religious error lying slander jealousy pride racial prejudice stubbornness it can all lead into separation alienation that brings an immunity turn with me and let's read the scripture and hear what god says an immunity because of sin separation because of sin james chapter 14 uh, sorry chapter 3 verse 14 james chapter 3 verse 14 but if you have bitter jealousy envy and contention robbery selfish ambition in your heart did you hear that in your heart 
Sin takes place in the heart. Separation takes place in our heart. Do not pride yourself on it. And thus be a defense of a false the truth. This superficial wisdom is not such as common. Come down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual. Even the devilish, it is demonic. For wherever there is jealousy, envy, contentious, rather selfish ambition, there will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sort of evil and vain practices. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, undefiled. Then it is peaceful, loving, cautious, considerate, and gentle. It is unwilling to yield to reason, full of compassion and good fruit. It is wholeheartedly and straightforward, impartial, and unfaithful, free from doubt, wavering, and insincerity. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come to God, He set us free. When we come to God, He delivers a prayer that deletes baptism. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11. But when Cephas Peter came to Antioch, a protest and oppose him of his face, I protest and oppose him of his say by his conduct. For he was blamable and stood condemned. Some people are in the church. They are separated, yet they are still in the same room. Separation is not physical, it is spiritual. For up to the time a certain person came from James, his head, his meals, were the Gentiles, the converts. And when the men from Jerusalem arrived, he withdrew and held himself aloof from the Gentiles and ate separately for fear of those of the circumcision. Peter was plain carnality. So Apostle Paul has to draw him and rebuke him. Whenever there are Jewish among them, he doesn't want to mingle himself with the Gentiles because he looked down upon them. And Peter was rebuked by Paul because he was creating an immunity. It is better for you to allow God to separate yourself. Apostle Paul advised, I appeal to you, brethren, to be one, your guide concerning those who create dissension and difficulties and cause division, in opposition to the doctrine, the teaching which you have been taught. I want you to turn aside from them to avoid them. We must avoid some people, and some people we need to live with them. We need forgiveness. To reunite us in love. We need forgiveness. When the prodigal son came home and confessed his sin. He did not only confess. But when he decided to come back to his father. The father loved him. The father showed his love towards him. While he was far distance away. Blessed are those who seek the reconciliation with their maker. Blessed are those. Blessed are those who come back to God. Let's read the Luke Gospel chapter number 15. We need forgiveness that will reconcile us back to God. Are you forgiven? Have you been forgiven? Have you been forgiven? Darling, you need that badly. Look, Gospel chapter 15. I can't talk about God's forgiveness without talking about the prodigal son. I will rise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned. What does it mean? He will rise up. He will confess. First of all, he will accept his sins and confess it to the father that he needs forgiveness. And when he was a far distance away, verse 8, 21, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned. He taught it, and when he came to the father, he did it. You can taught it in your mind, but you need to express it also in your mouth. 
Forgiveness can never be given to a person who have never asked of it. We don't think about forgiveness. We act on it. The gospel of forgiveness. Number one, we can never be forgiven until we know and until we accept that we have committed those sins. And when we come back to him and ask for forgiveness, he forgives us to, to reunite with us. Why? Because our sins cause an immunity between us and God. Whenever we come back to him, the Father accepts us. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 23, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and then remember that thy brother had ought against thee, whenever you bring your collection, you bring your offering to God, without forgiveness, God doesn't accept you, neither your gifts. We have many pastors who are preaching to you all kinds of things. They wouldn't like you to understand that even without having peace with men, you can never have peace with God. He said, whenever you bring your offering to God and you know that you have offended your brother, don't put your money into that silver collection bowl. Don't put your money, don't put your tie to God because God doesn't accept them. Leave your gift there before the altar. Go that way first to reconcile with our brother and then come and offer that gift to God. Wow. I don't accept Sinners, not anything that they bring to me. I don't accept worship of men who are not living holy. I don't accept the praise of men who are not living holy. Ladies and gentlemen, without reconciliation, without restitution of the wrong conduct and the wrong thing that we have done against our brother, God doesn't accept our prayers. Nada our gifts, nada our praise to him. Look, gospel, the chapter number 17. We need to be forgiven. Why? Because there is an enmity between us whenever we are not in good terms. Luke 17, 3. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he repents, forgive him. Does it mean that it's only when a person repents that I should forgive him? Not only that. I should forgive him even if he has not repented. But here he's saying that to forgive him, hear me, take him back. Take him back to be your friend. Your brother has offended you. He has not accepted his sin. You have forgiven him. And you cannot take him back to be your friend. Because he will do it again. If he repents. Did you hear that? Only after repentance. Do you have to accept the person back. And take him as your friend again. But forgiveness is a must. Verse 4. And if he trespass against thee seven times in the day. And seven times in the day turn again. To this saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Did you hear that? As much as he comes back to you to ask for forgiveness, you must. You must forgive people even if they don't ask you. Other than that, your sins will never be forgiven. Jesus teaching the gospel of forgiveness at it works in the book of Matthew gospel chapter number six let's read verse 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors forgive those who owe us love those who owe us money those who owe us affection as we forgive those who owe us he continued to say in verse 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is the condition, and this is making it very, very strange. If I don't forgive men of their sin, heaven will never forgive me. So forgiveness is not something that we need to trade with it at all. Forgiveness. Delating the button. Pressing the button of delay. And... Uh, 
certain peace with men if you forgive men of their sin your heavenly father verse 15 but if you don't forgive men of their trespasses neither would your heavenly father forgive you of your sin forgiveness is what we receive from god and we minister to others people who sin against us when they express repentance we need to forgive them even if they don't we must forgive them ladies and gentlemen have you made your life right with those who have wronged you when people repent do you forgive them like you were forgiven by your heavenly father sin brings an immunity between us and god and man that is why we need forgiveness and forgiveness will come only after we have repented god forgiveness comes by repentance man forgiveness may come without repentance but god forgiveness will always demand repentance let me say this again man may forgive without repentance but god will never forgive without a change of mind and a change of lifestyle it is very very profound man may forgive you man may forgive you because you have asked for forgiveness but god will only forgive you only when you repent from your sin change of mind that affect your conduct sin causes us to lose our self-respect sin make us worthless and causes us to become defeated in the sight of god we are losers whenever we walk in sin sin does not only alienate us sin does not cause us to be run away from god but sin bring weaknesses to our self-worth we don't value ourselves any longer we don't see ourselves that we are worthy any longer so long as we walk in sin many of us have not seen the danger of walking in sin job chapter 42 verse 6 therefore i abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes therefore this is job after job has come to know that there is a sin in his life that has caused him to suffer in that minor he came to his sense and said i hate myself now when we fully face the consequences of our deeds we think how could i do this thing how can i allow myself to be like this ladies and gentlemen a sincere repentance causes you to know how worthless you are sin causes us to lose our self worth Matthew chapter 26 verse 33 Peter answered and said unto him though all men shall be offended because of thee yet I will never be offended Jesus said unto him very very I say unto you that this night before the cock crows thou shalt deny me thrice Peter said unto him though I should die with thee yet will i not deny thee likewise also said all the disciples they didn't know that they have sinned in them and all of them in that night betrayed jesus christ turn with me to the verse 69 to 75 matthew 26 69 75 now peter sat outside the play the palace and this damsel came unto him saying thou also was with jesus of galilee but he denied it before them all saying i know not what you are saying oh my god peter 
doesn't consider himself worthy to be counted among the life of Christ. When you are living in sin, Peter denied him too. I am a sinner. I don't know him. I don't know him because I don't love him the way he would have loved me to love him. I don't know him because I don't like him the way he would have loved me to like him. Please, I don't know him. And when he had gone out onto the porch, another maid saw him and said unto her, This one were with him. This fellow also were with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I don't know the man. And after a while came unto those who stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also are one of them. This speech betray thee. Thy speech betray thee, reveals and expose you. And he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crow. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus Christ that he said, Before the cock crow three times, you will deny me. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Beloved, this is what but a Peter experienced because he didn't know Jesus. Because he didn't know Jesus. Do you know him? Do you really know the Messiah? Do you talk like him and live like him? Do you understand his ways? Sin will never let you know the Jesus Christ. Let us come back to him. Forgiveness will restore us. Second Timothy, sorry, First Timothy chapter 6. Where am I? First Timothy chapter 1. I'm sorry for that. First Timothy chapter 1. The verse number 12. Let's read. I do thanking to him that had comforted me in Christ Jesus our Lord. For he gives me faithful and put me in a ministry. Putting me in a ministry. The first was blasphemer, which our first was. And I pursue and full of wrong things. But I've gotten the mercy of God. For I unknowing did in unbelief. But the grace of our Lord overabounded with faith and love that is in Christ Jesus. A true word and worthy all receiving. For Christ Jesus came into this world to make sinful man save on which I am the first. I am the greatest among the sinners that Jesus came to die for. Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul is testifying of his forgiveness. That his sense of worthless. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this because I oppose Jesus Christ. I persecuted Christians. And when he was forgiven and became one of Christ, he became one of the most effective servants of God. Forgiveness restore us. Forgiveness restore our senses and our self-worth. But a Paul do no longer saw himself that he didn't deserve the grace. He stood among multitude. Peter and Paul, they stood and they declare in the house of apostle chapter number two but the pizza peter stood publicly and defended the name of jesus christ he represented it although he denied jesus few days ago but now he stands and preach the gospel of jesus christ to the jews and the gentiles and he promised them he promised them, if any person turned to Christ, the veil is taken off of his eyes. He began to see himself how worthy he deserved the forgiveness of God. You and me deserve the forgiveness of God to live for him. The gospel of forgiveness. God has no longer view us the way we used to see ourselves. God will represent us in a different manner 
that we have never known ourselves. By bringing Jesus Christ in our heart, we begin to see ourselves that the blood has made us worthy. Beloved, when we come to Christ and seek for forgiveness, the veil is removed and we begin to see things in his eyes. Romans chapter number 6, the verse number 4. For we be together buried with him by baptism into death, that as Christ arose from death, by the glory of the Father, so walk we in newness of life. When we come to Christ, we receive the newness of heart that affect our choices. Christ renew our hearts. We no longer see ourselves how we used to be. So we see ourselves in the manner of His loving kindness. We begin to conduct our life in that manner our sense of lack of worth is taken over by the suffering of Christ beloved sin gives us the burden of guilt we need forgiveness because sin is a load Adam and Eve hid themselves because they were afraid they felt guilty and ashamed we need forgiveness to walk in boldness we need it because sin bring guilt we are ashamed oh King David said when I remember my sin I am ashamed Psalm 38 let's read King David saw how awful he looks like Sin brings guilt. Sin imposes a heavy load on us. None else is my flesh from the face of thy. No peace is to my bones from the face of my sin. Apostle Paul, uh, David is saying that there is no health. I don't live a healthy life. I live fragile. In the face of your angry, when I stand before your angry face, I have no peace for my bones, no strength. Sin causes us to be weak. Carrying the sins of guilt, there is nothing painful like that. For my wickedness be gone over my head as a heavy burden. Those be made heavy on me like a heavy weight. They are heavy upon me. Sin imposes a great load on us. You can't lift up your eyes. You can't look at the face. You are always afraid. Sin is a load. That is why you are me need forgiveness of God. How long are you going to carry the load of sin? How long? How long? Come to God and let him give you the forgiveness of your sin. My head wounds were rotten and be broken for thy face of my own wisdom. My wounds were rotten, said David. It was broken because of my folly, because of my foolishness. I made it wretched, he said. Ladies and gentlemen, when you live in sin, when you carry the load of sin, it is the most dangerous thing that one can ever live with. Sin is a guilt. He said it's a heavy burden. I became corrupt. And I have my wounds because of my folly. I've been bent down. I've been bowed down unto excess all the days I have gone mourning. Sin brings grief. Grief. The burden of sin causes us to grieve. There is no happiness for sinners. There is no happiness. If you do me, I will do you. Is it true? <laughs> sin 
is dangerous thing. Sin expose us. Sin bring infection. Sin bring hurt. Read the whole book of Psalm 38. And let King David talk to you. The danger. The danger of committing sin. God will never ignore. Unless you have asked for forgiveness. Judas Iscariot went and killed himself. He couldn't stand. He couldn't stand the guilt that he was carrying. He couldn't stand the load that he was carrying. Turn with me, Matthew chapter 27, verse 3 to 5. Judah, the one who had betrayed him with a case for 30 pieces of silver, saw that Jesus has been condemned, and suddenly Judas regretted. He regretted. He didn't repent. There is difference between being regret. And being repent. Saying sorry. Saying sorry alone. Doesn't mean that you have repented. So we can say sorry. But we have not repented. We can regret. Oh I feel sorry for what I have done. But yet you have not repented. <laughs> Judah regretted what he had done. He took the silver back to the chief priest. And the elders and he tried to return it to them. I can't keep this money, he said. I have sinned. I have betrayed an innocent man. His blood will be on my head. What Judas didn't do was he couldn't ask for forgiveness. The chance to come back to ask for forgiveness was locked. In his heart, he never felt that he would be forgiven, therefore he didn't ask. He never felt that he would be forgiven. There are some people who live like that. They don't feel that when they ask God for forgiveness, God will give it to them. They don't know it. And they don't even try. It doesn't even come into their mouth. I have lived in a spiritual room like that before. And I know. Sometimes for you to be able to defend all that you are talking about. It is always good that Christ will let you feel. When he betrayed. When he rejects and refused people. When he takes people out of his book. How they feel. Now you will know how to deal with such people. Ladies and gentlemen. The chief priest and the elders said we were through with you friend. The state of your soul is really none of our affair. How you feel we don't care. It's your own business. We are through with you. We have done what we are supposed to do. So, what do we have to do with you? We have nothing in common with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Judas threw down the money in the temple, went off and hanged himself. Why? Because they didn't receive the money. Had they received the money, it might have given him the chance. But they said, well, that money is yours. Your sin is a guilt. It's a heavy load. Judas couldn't bear it. He threw it down, but the, the weight was still upon him. Oh my God. That guilt drove him to cause suicide. Sometimes people tend to drink alcohol, drugs. People turn into immoralities. They turn to prostitution. People, people, to escape from guilt is not an easy task. Come back to him. Come back to Jesus. And ask for forgiveness. Because the wounds of sin. In our mind. In our conscience. Is very very strange. And very very heavy. Many people live year after year. With this burden of guilt. Not knowing what to do. To make it right. Or not willing to do. What they know is needed. They are not willing. Very few are willing to come for forgiveness. This is the gospel of forgiveness. Come! King David remembered and he came before his maker and said, it's only you I have sinned against. Psalm 51. My sin is before me every day. I have committed such an abominable sin. Forgive me and blow it away. Are you living in sin? Come to him. Ask him to forgive you. He will. He will. 
This is the gospel of forgiveness. Human being might not forgive you. But when God forgives. And you repent. You will get salvation. And safety to your soul. One of the most difficult episodes in the Bible. Are in the life of King David. Was his affair with Bathsheba. All that David did was to kill this man, to sleep with his wife, impregnated her. He covered it, he thought that it was all right. He covered it, he thought that maybe you are covering your sin. You have temporal peace. Because nobody knows it, but your mind knows it and your conscience would never set you free. Ladies and gentlemen, are you having pains? Why don't you go back to God and ask Him to forgive you? Sin leaves us pains. The burden of sin inflicts pains on us. When God sent His messenger, His prophet Nathan, to visit David, this is what He said Look on me with the heart of mercy, O God. According to your loving kindness and your tender mercy, give me forgiveness. According to your great compassion, wipe out every consequence of my shameful crime. Thoroughly wash me inside and out of all my crooked deeds. Cleanse me from my ways and my sins. For I am fully aware. I am convinced. I am aware of all of them. And I'm guilty. I am guilty. Cleanse me from my wickedness with high soap. And I will be clean. If you wash me, I will be white than snow. Help me hear the joy of happiness as my companiment. So my bones which you have broken would dance in light inset. Sin breaks our bone. Sin makes us weak. Have you seen a very strong man that when he commit a sin and he stand there and he can't throw a punch? You are able to fight. But because sin has broken your bones, you can't fight again. You have the ability to run. But sin will make you weak that you can't run again. He breaks our bones. Come to God for restoration. Come to the Savior. He will restore you. Come to the Messiah. Come to the leader and the owner of your heart. He loves you more than you love yourself. He thinks about you more than you think and you wish. He have a purpose and a plan. Read Psalm 51 and come back to God. He will save you. He will. Yes, he will. I know he will. I believe he will. I know without a doubt that my Savior will. He will. He have done it to many. And when you come back to him, he will. Ask him to have mercy. Me, forgive me, Lord, according to your loving kindness, according to your multiple of tender mercy. Blow out my transgression. Blow it. Forgive me. Forgiveness blows away our sins, and it brings restoration to our heart. This is what Brother Peter said in Acts chapter twenty-two, verse thirty-six. Come to God. Believe with your heart, confess, turn away, be baptized, and receive forgiveness. Therefore, let all house of Israel know surely that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were prickled in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and the brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repentance means change of your mind. Your attitude and your conduct that affect your ways and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit why is the gift of the Holy Spirit very important that is the gift that will restore you the strength to live before God Ladies and gentlemen, sin hasn't got any good thing for you. The gospel of repentance. Come back to God. 
confess your sin ask him to turn his anger away from you let him blow it away not your name but let your sin not a burden of guilt can be replaced with a beautiful sense of innocent innocency through jesus blood but the peter said come 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 and repent in matthew chapter 11 the lord said come come and i will save you i will take the heavy laden out of your heart and give you rest to your soul do you want this rest do you want to have this rest all you need to do is to ask him say lord jesus i believe that you are the only one that can give me this rest i come to you for that rest redeem me from my sin change my heart from every wickedness i invite you into my life come as my lord and my savior save me from my wicked ways and let me live my life for your glory i thank you because you love me in jesus name i pray beloved if you have prayed that prayer it is not finished yet you might need to go to brothers and sisters that you have offended you might need to go to them and ask them also to forgive you forgiveness is between god and between man and ourselves i will continue to talk about this gospel of forgiveness in the days ahead of us until the lord gives me another message he wants me to de develop this message so i want you to go to friends that you have offended and i want you to forgive yourself also other than that the heaviness of guilt will press you down may god bless you and guard you may he keep you from falling from deception may his name become greater in your heart as you pursue him may his will be seen and be loved in your life in jesus name amen beloved this teaching that you are hearing you can listen to me 24 7 on this program every day every night also you can join me on facebook my name is gabriel pastor adade i will be with there i will coach you i will guard you i will pray with you or whatever you want me to do i will do it with you i've had many people coming back after i have prayed with them and given their testimonies to god be the glory you are one of them come back to me and let us agree with god my heart desire is that you will have forgiveness of your sin if there is any teaching that you need to hear at this end time is the gospel of forgiveness of sin continue to listen to this series and you will never be the same again until we meet again my name is brother gabriel you can listen to me also from www.godswordforus.com godswordforus.com go there that is one of the ministries that the Lord has given unto me. You can not only listen to me, you can listen to many preachers who can also help you to make heaven. Until then, remain blessed. Amen.